That's not gossip. But in almost every case that we think that's the case, it is gossip. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at one time it was in Kuliagram when Mahaprabhu took sannyas and came he left Navadweep, became sannyasi and then several years later he came back to Navadweep and many people who had offended him and offended his devotees were coming to surrender to him and one Brahman, a Brahman said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that I have, I have insulted your devotees so many times. And obviously for a Brahman to insult devotees, it's not just what he's considering frivolous. He's obviously thinking that based on Shastra and based on my Brahminical wisdom, I must expose this person. But after, he, after that person got the mercy of the Lord, he understood, what have I done? I have offended so many of your devotees. Now I'm surrendering to you. Please give me instruction. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, criticizing others is like poison. And praising the good qualities of devotees is like nectar. So stop. Do not criticize others. With your tongue. Chant the holy names of Krishna. Chant the glories and pastimes and teachings of Krishna. And chant the glories of Krishna's devotees. And find the good in others. Haribo. And at one point, Mahaprabhu said something very profound. He said, do two things and I'll take you back to Godhead. Don't criticize others and chant the names of Krishna. Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Krishna Krishna! Hare Hare! Hare Hare! Hare So sometimes we have like a snake-like tongue that's like and wants to attack other people and criticize other people and find faults in other people but if somehow or other Krishna who's not different than his name Krishna is not different than his pastimes if we chant the names of Krishna chant the glories of Krishna Rupa Goswami said Krishna is dancing on our tongue as he danced on Kaliya's hoods he will dance on our tongue and gradually by this chanting we get purified. By chanting the holy names and not offending others, Vaishnava Parada is the first offense to the holy name, the greatest impediment. If we just chant and stop gossiping and criticizing, then Krishna dances on our tongue when we chant, and gradually we become purified. But sometimes that purification is not easy. Like Kaliya, poisons came out. Sometimes it appears when we're following the process even carefully that a lot of things about us just start coming out and, and we don't like it. Envy and greed and arrogance and desires. But just keep chanting. Keep following these regulative principles of freedom that Srila Prabhupada has given us. And gradually the poison comes out. We become purified. And then, in that, as we become purified, we become like Kaliya, genuinely humble. And from the core of our hearts, we can take shelter of Krishna as he's dancing in our tongue in the form of his holy names. Many hundreds of times louder, please.
many millions of times now. <laughs> Trillions and quadrillions and quintatrillion times louder, please. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So now, Kaliya is a Paramhamsa. He's a pure hearted, gentle, humble, compassionate, surrendered devotee of the Lord who's paradukha dukhi, whose only pain in life is to see the pain of others. And Krishna sent him to the Ramanaka Island. And Srila Prabhupada is so merciful. He said that that area is where Fiji is. And when Prabhupada opened a temple in Fiji, he established Krishna Kaliya. And this wonderful pastime of Kaliya is so popular. I was... <laughs> Recently I was in Tirupati. And Balaji's darshan is so supremely merciful. And I was... I was observing the wonderful carvings on the various goparams and the domes and the walls. And so often there's carvings of Krishna dancing on Kaliya. It's like one of the most popular of all the pastimes of Krishna. Why is that? It's just so incredible. The horror, the suspense, the tragedy, the ecstasy, the loving reciprocations, everything's there in Kali Alila. In fact, a little later, Krishna secretly invited Kali to come back to the Yamuna and raise his hoods and Krishna brought all the gopis on the hoods and he performed Ras Lila on Kaliya's hoods. So special. What a pleasure for the gopis to be dancing on Kaliya's slippery hoods. So after Krishna liberated Kaliya and Kaliya left, Krishna came out of the... He was in the water for all this time. For many, many hours. And now he had all these jewels <laughs> and all these garments that the Nagapatnis and Kali had given to Krishna as gifts of love. And he was covered with the flower petals of all the devatas. And he came out of the water and the Prajapasis. <laughs> What a, what a day this was. <laughs> Balaram wept tears of ecstasy and embraced Krishna and put Krishna on his lap and he was just examining Krishna's limbs to make sure he was all right. And he was still laughing. And Krishna laughed with him. And Yashoda Mai, Rohini Devi, Nanda Maharaj, they just gazed upon Krishna and fed him and embraced him. Everyone was greeting Krishna according to their own natures. And the Brahmins, the Brahmins were coming and giving blessings to Krishna, chanting mantras for his protection. And the Brahmins went to Nanda Maharaj and said that 
because of the blessings of Vishnu, Krishna has been saved. And to get the blessings of Vishnu for further protection, you should give charity to the Brahmins. That's what the Brahmins told Nanda Maharaj. <laughs> and Nanda Maharaj gave the Brahmins cows and jewels and so many charities and everyone was happy. But because it was such a suspenseful day and everybody was out of reach of Krishna because he was in that lake all day, dancing and in the coils and swimming, they all just wanted to be with Krishna. They couldn't give up his association. So they decided, let's just take rest tonight on the banks of the Yamuna. Because by this time it had become dark and gazing upon Krishna in the presence of Krishna all the gopis and all the gopas and all the cows and all the calves and all the brahmins and everybody the peacocks, the parrots, everyone was going to spend the whole night with Krishna in the forest and they all went to sleep but Vrindavan Lila is full of sweetness and then extraordinary challenges which make things sweeter. The moon, the stars, the cuckoo birds, Kokila, they're all singing and the bees are humming and the jasmines are blowing and the river Yamuna with all its lotus flowers, beautiful fragrances, oh, it's, it's millions and billions of times beyond heaven the pleasure of Vrindavan as they fell asleep together. Suddenly, they woke up. There was a fire surrounding them on all four sides. The fire was like impenetrable thick walls and they were reaching the clouds in the sky, practically reaching the stars. It was a massive fire because it was summertime. Fires happen in the summer. <laughs> but this fire, it was like a demoniac fire and it was on the verge of totally burning everything and everyone to ashes. And the Vrjabhasis who had just blessed Krishna. <laughs> they all looked at Krishna as their only shelter. Krishna, your cows are in distress, and so are we. <laughs> Please give us shelter so that we can serve you. That was it. Krishna just went. He just inhaled one time and the entire fire went into his mouth and into his body and disappeared forever. That is Krishna. Samsara dhavana ladila toka. Every morning we sing this song that this material existence is like a blazing forest fire. But by Krishna's mercy, what is coming through Srila Prabhupada and our gurus, that forest fire can be extinguished. Only the mercy of Krishna. Daivi Yeshukunamayi Mamamaya Durakeya. Krishna tells his material existence very difficult. But if one takes shelter of me, this blazing fire of material existence is extinguished. And how do we take shelter of Krishna? By taking shelter of Krishna's representatives who are acting on behalf of Krishna. Just as the Brijabhasis, when they went to find Krishna, they were following Krishna's footprints. And were taught Lord Chaitanya, Mahajano Yena Gatasa Bandha. The path to Krishna is to follow the footprints of those who are surrendering to Krishna.
Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He tells how each of these asuras or demons or obstacles represent a particular um, impediment to pure devotion and service. Kaliya represents envy, arrogance, and the cruelty that comes out of the heart when one falls victim to envious and arrogance. When people are cruel, that's just a manifestation of arrogance and envy. That's Kaliya. But by taking shelter of Krishna and chanting Krishna's holy names and following the footprints of those who love Krishna, one can conquer the Kaliya within us. And that blazing fire that was about to destroy the whole Vrijabhasi community. He proclaims that that fire represents conflict among Vaishnavas. Conflict within Vaishnav community. Just like a blazing fire. And here in Vrindavan at Radha Kund, Srila Prabhupada was with his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, he said to our Prabhupada that the mat is on fire. That the devotees are fighting and quarreling with one another over position, over influence, over facilities. He said this fire will burn the mat. The fact the mat is on fire. And that's the time when Shiva Prabhupada said, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada, that now we have this beautiful temple and people are fighting over who has charge, who has managerial positions, who has different facilities and rooms. Better we do away with it and distribute books. He said, if you ever get money, publish and distribute books. Yeah. And Prabhupada took that order as his life and soul. But Srila Prabhupada also built temples. And we heard yesterday from Braj Vilas Prabhu about his wonderful appeal for the temple of the Vedic planetarium. Because from 1971, Srila Prabhupada was talking about how he wanted that temple of Vedic planetarium built in Mayapur Dham. And he put so much of his life and energy into building temple in Mumbai for Radha Das Bihari and Vrindavan for Radha Sham Sundar Krishna Balaram and Gornitai. So Prabhupada had temples. And he had book distribution. And he had prasad distribution. But this message was very important. We should be very much aware that we're not creating a fire that will burn down our Guru Maharaja's mat. By inner communal Vaishnav quarrel and we can disagree, but disagreements should be done with respect for Vaishnav culture. We're not politicians, we're Vaishnavas. That is what Srila Prabhupada expects of us. We are not politicians. Today, I was planning to tell so many stories, but I ended up just telling one story. 
I'm sorry I went over time, but I'm very grateful to you. I hope and I pray that everyone is enjoying becoming inconceivably, mystically, and wonderfully purified on this Vrindavan Yatra. Everyone, please dance.